Hi guys, so I'm back to my roots. They say east or west, home is best. <laughs> you guys do remember this farm, right? It's been quite some time that I shared anything from here on the channel and it's because nothing was happening here. Nothing completely. So you do remember that the last major occurrence on this farm was when I had full typhoid and I had to cull all my birds. I had to sell off all my birds because they were sick. Now that was quite some time back. That was actually last year in... When was it? Oh my god, I don't even remember. That should have been in June or July last year. So it's been quite a number of months without anything happening here. We actually did get rid of all the local chickens that were around. So before you guys do remember that we had quite a number of local chickens around. Then we had some turkeys around. The geese were over here. We got rid of all of that. Actually, I can take you around and show you the ruins. So this is home. You can see it's been empty very very empty since grandma passed on she had been the one taking care of the home and you know where grandma is everyone is so there would be lots of people around at home uh, you know it's very cheerful when you come around everyone is happy everyone is excited well when she passed on it simply meant that there was no one everyone left everyone went and dad can't be here because well, he's also got to work and do other things of his own. So, because of that, the place got vacated. And the repercussions were huge. It's actually because of that that the birds got sick. Because when she was around, the supervision was tight and nice. She was very, very good at management. So, after, you know, she passed on, the birds got sick and they got sick and they died. So, it was terrible. But, well, well, it doesn't really matter. What happened in the past is in the past. And we are happy about the life grandma lived, isn't it? We are very happy. I thank God for the impact she had on my life. And now I'm excited to be back onto this project. Actually, if you're enjoying the videos, it would be really exciting if you hit that subscribe button. So yeah, the house got empty really. Um, most of the time the house has been closed. And you guys do remember this. This was the chicken house that I had built for grandma to keep the local birds on the inside of this house. Well, let's go inside and I'll show you exactly what's happening here. You see... It became a kitchen. Oh, there's a chicken over here. How did it get in here? I don't know. I'll have to get rid of this one. It's incubating actually. I thought there was no birds at all. So it looks like there's one chicken over here. I don't know how it has been handling. Anyway, this place has been open most of the time. So I think it finds its way in and out. This one I'm going to get rid of. Yeah, probably give away. And you can see that it was working as a kitchen. This, this was firewood that was being used to cook. You can see the firewood and you can see groundnut husks over here. So some cooking had been going on on the inside of this place. Very abandoned. You can see the gardens over there. They're not well maintained at all. Let's go inside and actually check out the poultry unit. Okay. Oh, our fence. Our fence is actually deformed. You look at it. Here is an abandoned drinker. Um, but let's get in. Yeah, so over here is where the people who would help me look after the birds were staying. Yeah, so this is empty, vacated completely. Then if we check out this, this was the store where I would keep the feeds. And right now we have groundnuts on the inside here. There is no, there is no chicken feed, you know. It's groundnuts. I hope you know what groundnuts are. I think in some cold countries they call them peanuts. So these are peanuts that I had planted some time back and this is the harvest that I got. Actually, it didn't get a very bad harvest. You can see all those bags. All these bags are full of peanuts on the inside here. But the place is all ramshackled. It's very disorganized. Super, super dirty. And then, again, there is another store right here. But I failed to get the key. So I'll have to keep looking for the key. Because I have important stuff in there. Then we can enter the house. You can see our food dip for preventing disease. Then when we enter the house, you can see the house. Well, it's in a not so good state. Not so bad state either. Yeah. So if you look around, number one, the first and obvious thing is that I didn't build the house really well. Look at the timber. It's breaking. It's breaking. The timber is breaking. It's really breaking. I think the weight at the top was too much for it. Even here, it's breaking. So I think I used small pieces of timber. And I should have had lo more pieces of timber running along. You see? There are really few. So it wasn't strong enough. 
we're going to try to reinforce it though that's part of the whole plan we're going to try to reinforce it you look at the floor the floor is a bit patchy we had put concrete on the floor but you can see that it's a bit patchy meanwhile you can see that i have no gumboots so if you're wondering why i have no gumboots it's because i can't find them the gumboots disappeared I think someone picked them while I was away, I don't know. Maybe someone who wanted to dig, they wanted to use them in the garden. They took them, or I don't know, someone just picked them and took them. I, I don't know, I really don't know. So I have no gumboots. So for now, I'll have to make do with these plastic shoes. But I'll actually be getting gumboots very soon. Actually, today I'm going to be getting gumboots because I'm going to have to go to the town to buy a few things that I'm going to need over here. So the flow is certainly not the best. But it's not the worst. We're going to first sweep it and I'll see what it's like, you know, how bad it is. If it's not terrible, honestly, I won't do much about it. I'd put some concrete, but I think the concrete mixture wasn't good enough. So it didn't work properly for me. So I'm going to, you know, try to patch it up and then I fill it, bring in as much litter as possible, as much litter as possible to ensure that, you know, there is limited access to the ground. You can see this area over here. This is where we were isolating the sick birds any birds that would get sick would isolate them here we're probably going to have to do better because it doesn't make sense isolating sick birds in the same house with other birds that are fine so um with time you learn and you know you make things better so i believe i've learned enough i honestly do believe that mistakes are going to be very very few if any this time and let's move to the top floor oh before we move to the top floor you can see these pieces of timber it's not timber, they are poles, yeah? And these poles, these are part of the things we're going to be using to support that flow on the inside so that it doesn't collapse on us. You can see how much vegetation has grown all around here because, ah, because there's been no one taking care of the place. Anyway, let's get up. This has broken. We'll need to fix this. We'll need to fix this. You see this, yeah? So this has broken. We'll need to fix it so that no one falls in. Let's get in here okay so this place looks a bit better than before yeah this looks a bit better than the lower floor you can see the floor over here it has a few areas where the places disappeared you can see the feeders the feeders were cleaned and put back in here but again they've already gotten stained and everything so we're going to need to get them out and clean them disinfect them uh, you can see our laying boxes that the birds had been using for laying the eggs you can see our roasting patches i'm going to remove these roasting patches because I'm going to have to use this space under here for something. I'm going to have to put drinkers under these roasting patches. So all the roasting patches are actually going away. And yes, we finally got proper piped water at home. Yeah. So maybe two weeks back, uh, we had to make sure that we get water. So I had someone help me, you know, handle the whole thing. And we have water on the farm. So before that, we were using that tank. You guys can see the tank over there to collect rainwater. The problem would come when there is no rain for a long time then we would be in trouble the water would need to be picked from a borehole somewhere the borehole is really far it was a lot of struggle and stress so we erected these stands you people do see the stand we're going to put some tanks actually tomorrow i'm going to be doing plumbing so tomorrow i'm going to connect water tanks right on this stand over here it's a metallic stand and then we're going to connect a pump I do have a pump that we're going to be connecting here and that pump is going to be pumping water from that tank over there right into the tanks that are going to be going to the top and then we shall have this because this is really expensive so we shall have this for reserve just in case water disappears or it's very dry and we have no water at all it's going to be a proper lifesaver and yes you do remember this area this exact area is where we used to keep the black soldier flies from so just in case you didn't know the black soldier fly project was also put on hold because there was no one to manage it and take care of it it's such a sensitive project it needs proper supervision and so when grandma went to be with the lord it became very very difficult to try to handle it because you know people need to spray the the cotton wool so that there is water for the for the flies you need to make sure that there is constant feed for the larvae it was a bit complicated without her so i had to pause it hopefully i'll be able to get back to it sometime later on but this structure over here is what i had actually built and it's why we were to be handling the black soldier flies before that we were using a very small temporary structure here but then i moved on from that so this has been sitting here for a really really long time and it's very weak 
very very weak so this timber has been hit by rain sunshine so we can't use this anymore so i'm actually going to abandon this and then right over here i'm going to build a store that i can be using to keep feeds for the chickens because the place that i'm using as a store is going to be very very small the plan is that in maybe maximum two weeks time i'm going to fill that top floor with birds 2,000 birds up and down yeah so the structure is able to take up to 2,000 birds using a spacing of eight birds per square meter i have proper ventilation over here as you can see so that's not a very big issue so i'm going to do eight birds per square meter if you're starting out i advise you to do six because yeah but i'm going to be doing eight birds per square meter so that's the work that i have to do so today um i'm going to be getting guys to help me put up the supports on the inside of the structure and then i'm going to go in and actually just start assembling the drinkers that i'm going to be using you know the drinkers the automatic drinkers just start assembling them and then we're also going to get wood shavings later on after the place has been cleaned out and boom we'll soon be ready so yeah i know it looks like the work is too much and honestly <laughs> that's not too far from the truth the work is actually quite a lot but it's not as much as you think yeah just a few modifications are going to be made not do the plumbing do the cleaning and the place will be ready the feeds are going to come in and the place will be ready and yeah the work is going to start so come on i'm really really excited about this i know for the people who have been following farm up for quite some time you're as excited as me actually if you're as excited as me tell me what do you think good idea isn't it thanks guys for watching don't forget to hit the subscribe button smash that notification bell yeah <laughs> i'm going to be stalking the farm with farm up chicks so just in case you want to order some farm up chicks come on i leave the numbers that you can contact us on in the description below honestly there is nothing better than farm up chicks so come on just send us a message thanks for watching lots of love catch you very soon with another video bye, -bye.